What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to do another repair video. I got a D5C XL with a blade ball wore out. Um, the C-frame has also got some wear in it back there. But right now we got a stubborn pin I'm going to be working on with the old uh, spike maul that everybody calls it. I used to call it a pin hammer, but I was corrected multiple times by people in the railroad industry. So I'm going to show you the slop in this and uh, you see what you think. She's pretty whooped. some of you uh, oh that's probably way close I know some of you are probably saying you could take them shims out but I think it's beyond that point so we're gonna get after it I'm gonna set the camera up and try to palm this pin out and see what happens here's the old town wall they're gonna be my uh, assistant for this uh, pin mounting stuff you gotta say hi to everybody good morning everybody we gotta help them out again the old town wall their oversight committee my job for today. The process. Oh, let's see here. Usually it's safety third. I've already used my air hammer. It's not moving the pin. I don't know if you guys can see it or not from there, from that angle. I can kind of see it. We'll move over here though. How's that sound? We can kind of see a wee bit better of what we got going on there you go I've already used the big snap on air hammer like I said this did not it got one pin out but not this one so we got to get out the hammer and see what we can do throw this stuff on the bumper oh I've almost been too busy to put out videos it's been good We'll see. Oh. I think she moved. Oh yeah, she's moving. See if the old air hammer will do it. Oh, where's that long bit at? Right there in the bench. Sometimes you gotta get the old uh, get the old hammer out and do some swinging. See how this comes out the rest of the way. No air hammer needed. All right, pull that off. You gotta pull the front of that off. Then the blade, well, this bottom piece down here has got to come up, so that's fine. Just take the old air hammer, need the shorter one, shorter bit. See if this goes through there. A lot of the times the air hammer works, but sometimes you just need a regular hammer. Oh, I gotta get a different, uh, up there. I don't know if you guys seen that or not. There she goes. All right, so we got our angle cylinders. There are two bushings, spacers, whatever you want to call them on top. This one's also got a spacer. And a spacer, no factor there. Um, I got the top off, then I got to get the blade ball um, actually off, but we'll go from there. So I got to get that top off, then I'm going to pick up the blade, and then we'll see. Uh, we'll see where we can get from there. All right. So I like to leave the blade. You know, it's got a little bit of back pressure, but not much. It's not too bad. 
Let's see if we can't get that off there with a pry bar. She might be stuck. That bearing might be. Oh yeah, there we go. Now I just want to get myself out of the way of it falling. And the old time welder out of the way too. goes. So that's off there. Now our blade is loose. I'm going to fire it up, fire my crane up, pick up the blade so it's hanging and I can reach them uh, bolts much better. Let's start the truck. So I got the other side already. You guys see what I'm doing? Kinda. So I got the other side already started off. But these were uh, pretty tight. Let me grab that other extender. The old wrench extender comes in handy for stuff like this. Loose. It's pretty simple, but a big one. You were probably recording the whole time you weren't. No. I don't know. I, I just touched it one time. Anyway, blade's off now. It may have had a camera issue, but here's the new one. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's the new blade yoke. I guess all the cat calls it a yoke. There's the old one. I don't know if you can see the size difference or not. But yeah, she was pretty whooped. So next thing is we got to cut all this out right here and uh, weld the new one in and then we got to cut off this socket on this side and weld the new socket on there so we're gonna get after it I'm gonna set this blade down so we can move it and then we'll be good to go
There you go. You're all set. All right. This oh. is the old time while they're working for PB2 repairs today. Uh, I'm grinding this thing up and cleaning this thing up. I had my apprentice cut this off and he didn't do a very good job, so I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup work on this. Cleanup so, work? Yes, I'm going to start doing it now. Look at that. Hold up. Hold up. Let's show yeah. him up. Right, here he comes to talk his story now. He'll tell you his story. Look at Look how rough that is in there. You know, it's, it's like he had he had like he had a bad case of the shakes, or he had much, too much to drink last night, or something. Not very smooth in here, so I'll take care of it. Too much to drink last night. So now I'll have to take and do a lot of grinding work, keep this thing trued up, and cleaned up, so I can start to weld on it. So as I always say, cleanliness next to godliness.
already torched it off, did some grinding. So I did did some grinding and uh, now it's all cleaned up. But blew out the holes. So I want to make sure that all of our threads are clean. So I'm going to head in here with a tap. Seven eight four thread is what the bolt is for this. And because uh, you did torching and grinding and stuff, I blew it out with the air hose, but. It's always nice to just run a tap in till it bottoms out and take it back out again. Um, like I said, I torched it off, I ground it off. You can see the remnants laying down there. So I got done grinding. Um, but when you grind, you have a little bit of metal that goes across the, the thread hole there. So you want to make sure you got a good clean starter thread. That's really all I'm doing right now. I'm just cleaning her up. Oh, what a day. It's been a day. I'll tell you what, the old time Wally, he's welding his, welding away like you just seen. He's still welding. And I'm going to get out the old, uh, get these done, this side down here. And uh, hopefully, there'll be, uh, I don't know if we'll finish it up today or tomorrow morning. We'll see. But either way, the biggest thing is you want to get these threads good and clean because every time you go to adjust the blade ball, you got to pull these in and out. So, I don't know, some guys use Loctite, some guys use grease, some guys use NICs. To tell you the truth, I've used it all. I don't know what's the best route. Um, i tell you what I don't like is not tight sometimes, um, unless the guys, I mean, if you know the guy's a good good operator and checks it all the time, um, keep an eye on it, make sure he keeps the machine tight. I don't mind using grease or NICs or something like that, but if it's a neglected situation, um, you know, and Loctite's the best way because you know the guy's not gonna um, <laughs> ever really take any shins out. So that's the next uh, that's the next step there. Just making sure we got this all cleaned out. And I might grease this one just to make it nice and easy and everything all set or NICs. I don't know yet, but the thing I like about NICs and in grease is that you can really uh, you get a little extra torque down there because you're uh, lubricating the threads, you know. So now we'll uh, grab the bolt. We'll make sure. That one threads in nicely. Nicely. Make sure they all start good. The old time welder apparently needs a break. Gotta sit down for a minute. Yep. He's just making sure I'm still working. That's what he's doing. Yep. Uh, I'll tell you what. The work is out there, gentlemen. If you want to do this type of work, the work is out there. Just go find it. It's there. You don't even have to find it. It comes to you. It's probably, it's been a really good decision to do this. Definitely. Yep, good decision. I'm waiting for him to get the job done so I can get working at this stuff. It looks like they had NICs or grease on it, one or the other. But apparently, I don't know, the customer brought his own parts and he brought me three bolts. All that works. Maybe two or three. He brought me three bolts. Well, you know. Better than none, I guess. Well, yeah. I could have used them all, but now you just got to make sure 
that you're square. So that's the problem with the with this side is you got to weld this on. It's not really a problem, I guess. It's just you want to make sure that when you tack it, you're centered in all them bolts. So that's why I want to put them all on, center it, snug it up, and uh, call it good. Now I lost that last bolt. Where did I put that? Just had it. I had three. There it is. Now I just want to check the length on him to make sure they're the same as what he had. Yep, exactly the same. See what I don't get is how that's it's kind of a steeper neck down, but be alright. Probably just different manufacturer of the bolt. I'll tell you the truth, different era or whatever you want to call it. But I'll put both caps on and probably uh, tighten them up. Make sure we're centered. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. And then we'll weld this in. We gotta clean up my edges still, but because there's a little bit of paint on there, so I probably should do that first. Maybe the fire will block most of the wind. That. Just an up and down game. Just split the difference. Bottom two out. And we'll take a look down that hole. I don't have a flashlight on me, do I? Now, the main thing is I want to look in this hole just to see. Uh, we could go this way just a little bit on that one. Let's see what this one looks like. This one's dead center. And this one could go this way and up just a touch. So, the biggest thing I want to do is center them bolt holes because that's going to make it or break it. When you come to uh, tightening it up, kind of like that and like that. See so yeah, how it starts right away? So it's full of dirt now because it's got that grease on it. Let's do this other one. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to tack it on with the MIG welder. That way we're tacked and held in place. I'll pull it off and double check it. So let me get that welder out. Well, this came up the other night on a, um, on a live stream, the gold glass or the, the gold colored glass. I don't know if you can see that color or not. But it's gold and I like the way it looks. So that's what I've been using it for a long time now. Ever since the old time welder had some, I stole myself. I stole it. Straight up stole it. No, no jokes. Stole the uh, the copper or yellow or what a gold glass and I've been using it ever since. I bought my own since. I don't steal it every time. Just that first time. So that was the only one I got a really good deal on. A little windy outside, but we're just tacking, so pack with it. It'll be okay. Use our hand to block the wind a little bit. She'll be just fine, buddy. As you see, he's trying to weld. And he's trying to make the bacon and egg sound, but he can't. What? Huh? No. What do you mean I can't? Do you like that magnet? He was crying about the magnet today, but I like it extensively. 
for my welding pleasure. Uh, he's kind of dry about it, but you know. Yeah, he's not selling too bad. Look at he's got those sissy gloves. I didn't wear a pair of gloves at all. I, I weld the whole ball on with all a pair of gloves. I like these gloves. They're tall. Yeah, they're wore yeah, out. Yeah, Look at that. Yeah. See what I mean? Younger generation. Can't take a few little stings sure here and there, you know. Got it good. Wear long sleeves, you have to worry about. Yeah. Uh, Should attack that in four places so it gets it nice and tight so it doesn't shift on when you. I want happen. to check the, where the bolts are before I attack it in the other two places. Mm -hmm. There's a mechanic talking bull. Mm. Well, it matters. He had it all set before, but now he's going to unset it and make it move. I tapped it. Just want to make sure all four of them spots are good to go. Uh, leave them bolts in there kind of tight. That's what I would do. Definitely. Better to clamp. That way it sucks it tight like a clamp. Yeah. Good to go. And then we'll move. Your bolts will be in the same place. Because they have to be. Get the welding mat on, and then we'll be putting the blade back on. And hopefully, tomorrow we'll be done with this deal. It takes some time to weld everything and do it all up. So, how's your project going over there? Doing pretty good. Get, almost, getting close. Almost. Good deal. Let cool Letting her cool. Normalize. Normalize her up. All right. So we'll see what else I got on here in a minute. I don't even know where this video is going, to tell you the truth. But that's the gold glass. Boom. Something's on fire. Right Something's on fire? No. It's what? Paper. It's paper blow, I, think. I think it's paint. No, it's just paint chips. Oh, it's the paint chips. There ain't nothing on fire. Jeez.
high. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going up. She was too hot. Yeah, it's hard to do that. She's too hot for yeah. overhead right now. But I see a pair of flyers, so it's all. Side. I think the air is getting to me there. Good up again. It's fairly clean. blowing every fucking time I switch around to this side. That overhead's hot, baby. Almost need uh, a little more wire speed. What's that? What's that? The metal? Yeah. Probably could, but burning in so nice on the other side that.
by his ear, he knows what my love looks like. Just by listening to it. Passes now. It's four. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. And I should go one more on this side. To come up into this, I went pretty high on this. I didn't. I don't know if I went. You know what I mean? This is. You see where it ends. I mean, I could go one more out here, but I don't know if it's worth it. That's four in there. That's pretty good. Try to get right here in this corner too. Yeah, fill them corners up because that's gonna crack off. I think that's it folks. I think we're good to go. Well it on. The longest part's the prep work, you know. That's the worst part. Torching it all off, doing the prep work. This, no factor. No big deal. Oh, here's a little tip. I'm going to give you on machine setup. Now, if you're having a problem with setting your machine up, just have the old time welder set it up for you. It works great every time. Perfectly. Um, no, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a professional welder by any means, but I can definitely hold my own. I know we probably, I guess I'll give you the, the view and you can tear me up in the comments for these welds but you know I mean they're not the prettiest but they're definitely hot and tight that's how we like it I guess I should probably hold this camera straight for you yeah baby looking Pretty good. Anyway, we'll put the blade back on now.
So here's the problem. You got a shim with the blade ball. I'm gonna try to take three out this time, but you gotta take the bolts all the way out and then take shims out, take the blade almost all the way off to do it. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's gonna take some time. I'll catch up when I get her shimmed. All right, let's shut this crane off here. Shut the truck off so you can hear me. This is the most time consuming part about doing the thing. This will be time number four. You make your best guess and then you remove a shim and you don't want that blade ball to have that much slop. You want it a little tighter than that. So I'm gonna take one shim out of each side again which means i have to pull the complete bolts out of there and do it so this is definitely time consuming um i don't have enough battery to <laughs> let it play and do a time lapse of it how long it actually takes me to pull two shims out but it takes a while so anyway i'm gonna get after that because obviously that's too much. The last time I took all the shims out and I added shims to where it was the thickness of it and apparently I should have taken one shim out of each side from where it was touching to let her, let her go tight. So anyway, that's what we'll do. So we'll be wrapping this job up. So here's a question for you before we get going. This is after the fact. How many shims Type in the comment below, do I need on each side of this D5C to shim it properly with a new blade ball and new sockets? Let me know what you think, because as you'll see, I had to guess a few times, and then I had to measure, and then finally, finally we got it right. So, I'll tell you the answer at the end of the video, but comment below, let me know what you think. Maybe I won't tell you the answer. Maybe I'll have to come out a live stream. That's it. I'll tell you on the live stream after this video drops. We'll see you there Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.